Hey, it's Jody, and welcome to the Jody Susner Show, where we're on a mission to educate and inspire those who seek elevated health and wellness. This episode is focused on self care, but not in the ways you might think. As you know, I believe in improving all aspects of health using exercise, nutrition, and supplementation as a way to gain strength, flexibility, cognitive function, focus, and more. Part of improving health includes self care in a way that allows you to keep exercising, eating well staying mentally sharp, and well-rested. To learn more about the ways that you can practice self-care, check the episode notes for my five simple ways to practice self-care and watch for an upcoming episode dedicated to this teaching. Today, however, self-care takes on a whole new meaning. You find yourself in the middle of a tragedy or unexpected life event. Will your self-care practice prepare you to work through the sudden change in your life's journey? Or will you be forced to find new practices in self-care as you navigate through the unknown. My guest today shines new light on her experience and her expertise in supporting you and your loved ones through her business, Touching Hearts at Home. Brianne Stromley has a unique and inspiring life story. She shares what brought her to her business and her newfound life purpose. I think you're going to love this episode. So on to the show. Welcome everyone to the Jody Susner Show. Today is a very special day because I have, well, a brand new friend that mm-hmm. happens to live in my neighborhood, mm-hmm. which is is perfect, mm-hmm. and someone that I respect fully for both being a entrepreneur, a businesswoman, a mom, the kind of person that's just a go getter. Yeah. And we were just talking when she came in that I'm just kind of a go getter myself, where I just self teach and right. and try to. You, you have to figure things out mm-hmm. in life. You mm-hmm. can't just go. I don't know. Yeah. No, it, it, it doesn't work well, that way. You gotta do it. You're constantly retrying. Right. And, and reevaluating and a little. And that's okay. And absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But today I have with me Brian Stromley and I'm thrilled to have you. So Thank welcome. You. Thank you for having me. I'm just so glad to start my Monday this way. Right. I mean, what better way than be with a new girlfriend? So like Jody said, we basically hugged each other the second we met. <laughs> right. That was like, that's true. Like, hi, yeah. oh, I like you. And then we went to one long lunch together, and then it just sealed the deal. Yep. Like, it yep. was just done. Like, girlfriends for life. Forever, right? Forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true. Yeah. Oh, I, you know, and, and I, you don't often meet people like that, but do you notice when you meet someone that you just click with, yep. it, it's easy. It flows, mm-hmm. and the conversation yep. flows, and yep. it's always important. And this is sort of a sidebar that... I think it's important that you have people in your mm-hmm. life that you really can feel like you you can be yourself. There's yep. no you can just be yep. gross or tired mm-hmm. or quiet or bubbly and talk away, yep. which is mostly which is good. Which mostly, is good, right? Yep. Um, well, okay. Now we want to get into, right into the nitty gritty, and I want you to understand that self care isn't necessarily your, you know, your degree mm-hmm. and your training, but you came to understanding self-care yes. in a really big way. Can you tell us more about Yeah, a really story? big way, a real personal way. And I think self-care is kind of a huge umbrella theme in my overall life that has led me a lot of different directions in the past, well, seven years now. So as Jody knows, and as many of you watching, tuning in knows, um, my journey towards really digging in deep is really started with the loss of my first husband, David. So I was 29 years old when uh, my first husband passed away. Uh, He fought cancer like hell for 10 months of uh, really everything to stay on this earth, and he wasn't able to. And one thing I always tell myself and other women that I meet who are going through a journey with a spouse with um, any kind of chronic condition or disease, that I spent way too much time in the beginning time before he passed away, wondering what would my life be like afterwards? What is this going to be like? Who am I going to be? What is my life going to be? And I will tell you that I wasted way too much time and energy in that moment thinking what life was going to be like. And I think many people will agree that when you're faced with those hard challenges and those walls and those Mm -hmm. that moment where life changes completely, you have no idea ever how your life's going to unfold. So I experienced that firsthand, and I would say to everyone who's listening, who we're in a really tough time of year. 
Um, the holidays are a beautiful time of year. We're with our kiddos. We're having fun. We're with the people that we love. But I just want to remind everybody that that's not always the case for so many people in our lives that are grieving and are hurting and are struggling with demons and battles within themselves. So just hold those people extra mm-hmm. close and dear this time of year. I always like to mention that. Mm-hmm. And I always like to say that my journey is so specific to me. Your journey is specific to you. We each have every day we can we can wake up the same, start make a choice. How is today going to be? And and so for me personally, um, I always like to say that the first year after David died was survival. It was just nothing short of survival. And all my widow uh, friends, men and women, have walked that with me. They're walking it now, and it is it's okay. Like it is survival. And the biggest thing that um, when you're when you meet a grieving person, of course we hear a lot like it just takes time. It just takes time. Like time heals all wounds. We all have said it. We've all have heard that. Um, Saying to someone at their spouse's funeral, it just takes time. Not the best time to say Mm. it. Like not. And and people have good good intentions. Right. So what do you say? You just say, I'm, I, I see you. I'm sorry. You hold the space. I think a lot about holding the space. So for those of you who are deep in that season of hearing me, seven years past that moment, just know that whatever season you find yourself, you're in the, just, it's okay. You're in that right space. It's right. You're you're, you're in where, exactly where you need to be. You said something I want to, I want to touch on before you two go far away that you said my widow friends Mm -hmm. and, 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 and all the, the the widows I know that, that strikes me because now not having lost a Mm -hmm. spouse or Mm -hmm. a child or, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously loved ones, but someone right in your household, Mm -hmm. um, that wouldn't be my first thought is tell me wh- what does that mean? You're like oh. your widow friends. I have been so very blessed in my life. One of the absolute best things about social media, good, the bad, the ugly with social media is right. it does give us an opportunity to build community and to connect and to meet people you never would have met. Well, here we are. And so <laughs> I'm 29 years old and I Google widow and Google self corrects window. I'm like, no, I'm not searching for windows. I'm searching for community. And what that looked like for me is, first of all, getting a lot of insight and resources from my grief counselor at the time. Whenever I meet a person who is deep in loss, whether it's a parent or a child, like you said, or a spouse, um, the first thing I ask is that self-care piece. What are you doing for you? Uh, Mm -hmm. For me, my personal choice was to work with a grief counselor for, Mm -hmm. for years. And that was a huge part of my journey. Um, and so I always talk about community. So I've really become a resource. I have, um, for a period in my life and we can step into this. I, one of my pieces of my journey to really heal my heart, my soul, my mind was through yoga. So I did create my own personal community alongside, um, one of my good girlfriends, who's also a yogi, a great group that we called for a period of time called embrace the journey. And we had our own support group and that's, that support group served us for a period of time. It's no longer um, fitting a need for the two of us. And so we've kind of maintained those relationships, but that, that getting together time has passed on. However, there's amazing groups here in the Twin Cities for uh, men and women of all ages where you need to be with your peers, whether it is a group uh, with that is run by professionals that mm-hmm. is in that zone, those things exist. Or if it's kind of what I've described, people just coming together, sharing com- conversation, sharing community, and just being that listening ear. Right. So and they're specific to yes. widows, yep. widowers. Yep. Do you find that you, were you unique mm-hmm. in that you sought out one? You either sought mm-hmm. out self care. Mm-hmm. You may have not have defined it that way mm-hmm. when you h- hired or yep. started working yep. with a grief counselor, but you you sought it out I for did. yourself. You knew enough. What, there are those that they don't. They, mm-hmm. they sit in their grief and they don't yeah. reach out and yeah. they're worse off mm-hmm. as a result. Mm-hmm. It, it is still their journey. It's mm-hmm. still where they're meant mm-hmm. to be in the process they're supposed mm-hmm. to go through. But do you have advice to that? I mean, what, mm-hmm. what's the, the thing you can say to yeah. someone in grief that can... Right. Well, I think it is using the tools that are available to you and doing one thing at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, some people, they start reading a ton of books and hearing a lot of people's journeys, somebody somebody throws them into grief counseling. Somebody throws themselves into never missing a grief group where you're with other people. Mm-hmm. I always like to say, start with one thing. 
And then from there, really dig in to what best speaks to you. So for me, uh, long before David passed away, yoga was just amazing in my life. It was, I've always loved yoga and how my body feels. Mm -hmm. And so slowly when I felt strong enough, I picked a safe place to go to, uh, which for me was, um, Bluma in Minneapolis, which I'm yeah. still uh, in it's love familiar. with. I haven't been there, but I'm familiar. Yes. Yeah. So shout out to all my Bluma peeps because hey, they're out there too. I'm going to come and see you soon. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I just took that mat and that time for myself. And when I walked into that room for the first time after losing David, feeling strong enough to be there, I swear I felt, Jody that I had the big letter W on my forehead. Really? You feel like everyone knows. Like everybody must know that this is what I'm carrying around in my whole body. And not only do they know but they don't get you, mm-hmm. that you don't feel like You feel they, different. You feel different. very okay. different. So I mm. started going, and I just made it that routine. I talk about routine a lot in life. You just keep going, and you keep going. And there were days that I felt so powerful in my body, and there were days that I felt so depleted and sunken in, and I just took that as a lesson that, okay, this is what my body needs today. My body mm-hmm. needs me to listen to my yoga instructor when she says, if today's practice is for you just to do child's pose and hands and knees and to, or just to do shavasana for the entire practice, like mm-hmm. that's okay. But you, the, also unique, mm-hmm. you, you went anyway. Mm-hmm. You felt, you know what, I'm really just, I just feel heavy hearted mm-hmm. today. Mm-hmm. I don't feel empowered. I don't feel mm-hmm. strong. I don't feel confident in my ability to even do this, mm-hmm. let alone show up with a big yep. W on my forehead. Yep. But you, you went anyway. Yep. And, when and what is that? What do you tell yourself to, I mean, I know with exercise, mm-hmm. regardless of grievance, mm-hmm. showing up for exercise mm-hmm. is, is something internal, but mm-hmm. there's also this external mm-hmm. drive that mm-hmm. brings you there. And, and yeah. for you, it was your community. It was what my, else? it was the reason I went is I went for David. Mm-hmm. I kept mm-hmm. here. That was time and space that I got to be with him wow. where I got to be <sighs> good question. <sighs> I got to be quiet and I got to be still. Mm-hmm. Um, in yoga, you set an intention and a dedication mm. and that's a very personal oh, yeah. thing. And my intention and my dedication changes. And, but till the, to this day, 97% of the time, my intention is him mm-hmm. because he's not able to move his body on this mm-hmm. earth. Mm-hmm. I, for whatever reason, have been blessed to still be here, to have children, to remarry, to, to evolve into who I meant to be. Mm-hmm. So if, if a huge point of my devotion is to honor him. Mm-hmm. So I kept going and I connected really strongly with a, one of my favorite yoga teachers and I got brave and I just asked her, I was really nervous. What would it look like if I taught yoga? What is yoga school? What does that look like? So that was, that was huge. Right. That took wow. a lot of yes. confidence. Yeah. To Not be, coming from that, you know, mm-hmm. maybe, I don't know if your background wasn't necessarily no education no, and, and nothing like that. anything physical and mm-hmm. teaching and I wasn't Brave. at the time even thinking about teaching it was more of that curiosity of wanting to learn more mm-hmm. about how yoga is feeling in my body and I wanted to just learn it all oh so you, you weren't necessarily looking to teach no. or didn't know if you teach I, but yeah. you would improve the depth of your own mm-hmm. practices or and a lot okay. of a lot of men and women who go through yoga teacher training do it to deepen their own personal practice right, and right. their own connection to what it feels for them. And so if I always encourage people, hey, don't feel like if you're signing up for yoga teacher training, that means you're signing the dotted line to be a teacher. Right. You're, you're doing it for you. Good. Yeah. And so you, did, so you asked her. Yep, I asked. Found and her, she shared with me um, what she suggested. Okay. Um, David Nadi Yoga is in Minneapolis, South Minneapolis, right by Lake Harriet. Mm-hmm. And it, uh, the, the, the program was starting three weeks later. So I didn't even think. No, no coincidences. Nope. Nope. I am a firm so believer. So I mm-hmm. just signed up. I bought all the books. I got some new yoga clothes, and I went to work. And you lived near, in the area. I did. I lived in downtown Minneapolis. Felt like even more community. Yep. So here yep. you are, right in your own community. Yep. You're not traveling states away yep. or, yep. I mean, maybe even walking distance, right. but right. more community. Right, more community. Um, I have... Like I said, I got my yoga peeps. I got my widow mm-hmm. peeps. I have mm-hmm. all these n- networks of people that just fuel my life. And so I did that for almost two years, and I went in deep into it. And it was about that time that I was starting to teach yoga because I did choose that teaching felt good to me. Okay. So I started to doing that through my um, widow and widowers group, Embrace the Journey, and then I was teaching in other studios elsewhere. Um, and then that was a point where I met my now husband, Aaron. Yeah. 
and and being one mm-hmm. having your heart open mm-hmm. to the possibility mm-hmm. of meet, meeting someone is mm-hmm. an additional step yes. that you went through yes. in in self-care and, mm-hmm. and working through grief mm-hmm. but did you ever think that you would I mean did you go mm-hmm. into yoga or go into mm-hmm. life right after no. David passed that you would seek no someone the the self-care of yoga just opens you up mm-hmm. and it was not a coincidence that yoga was the right piece for me to really dig deep into my journey. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I talk a lot about this is that when I got to a point in my life that choosing to seek out an, that next great relationship in my mm-hmm. life, it really came because I found myself living two kinds of lonely. And the way mm-hmm. that I describe that is when you're lonely for the person you've lost mm-hmm. and you feel that loneliness but then you also have loneliness for not having partnership, not having mm-hmm. that person in your life who's got your back, who's mm-hmm. your, your person, who loves you inside, inside and out mm-hmm. um, just for you. I was feeling lonely for that type of relationship. You've mentioned to me before in talking about when I chose to share my life with mm-hmm. someone. and it, I mean, I've heard that before, mm-hmm. of course. I was, it was probably mm-hmm. years ago, but you, it, it stopped me for mm-hmm. a, a bit to, to understand – marriage and relationships and having a, a boyfriend or girlfriend or mm-hmm. a best friend yep. sharing your life with someone mm-hmm. meant so much more to me when you said it mm-hmm. that it, it stopped me a bit mm-hmm. it, it wasn't just words it was mm-hmm. truly mm-hmm. You're, you're making a choice to mm-hmm. open Absolutely. your heart your home to someone else yep. is powerful and it's powerful because you're trusting that person to hold that space for you right, right. it goes both ways mm-hmm. and here you were mm-hmm. th- a couple years into teaching yep. Yep. And you met Aaron. I met was Aaron. he a student? Was he a part of your No, nope, we met on eHarmony. I love it. So it took us one day to meet. So, oh. um, and I got a lot of support from my widow community to try eHarmony because okay. it. a lot of my friends who have gone through that journey, social media can be, and, and I, excuse me, not social media, but these dating things can be a, a bridge right. because you can either try it, shut it off. You can either go meet someone in person or not. Yeah, really have a lot right. of control, right. if you will. Right, right. So okay. um, Aaron and I both signed up for a one-year membership to be cost-effective. Yes. And it took <laughs> us it took us one day to meet. So we feel like we should be with the old guy on the eHarmony commercial. Right, it you literally, some money back. We should. So it took us, <laughs> it, it, it did take us one day to meet, and we feel very blessed about that because he had gone through a change in his life through a divorce and I'm and I'm going through my journey as a widow mm-hmm. and it was it's interesting looking back on it we were both weaving through our own journeys and our own paths at the same time wow and so both of our first it was both of our first date in 7 years on that day it was a big date and you <laughs> both had children we both had children or so we child. we both came into the relationship and ultimately our marriage with um, a daughter mm-hmm. um, our 8 year old Vea is like I said she's 8 and Layla is seven, and they were um, two and a half and three and a half when they came into each other's lives. Wow. And then together we have Sloan, who's two. So these three girls that were just put on this earth to just love and help and, and mold. be together. And, yeah, be together. So Well, oh, wonderful. Yeah. I mean, I feel that, you know, your story mm-hmm. and, and how we're tying this into self-care, mm-hmm. I mean, it mm-hmm. is in a really big way. Yeah. But I, I talk about self-care, and I think in, in – a small way comparatively, but it's all the same yes. and all equally important that mm-hmm. exercise and yes. eating right yes. isn't a thing you should do because you should be X weight or, right. or size, but a thing you truly have to do in order to not only be the best for yourself mm-hmm. and have longevity for the people that you love and that love you, but so that you are capable mm-hmm. and available for helping others right. and exactly being a role right. model and example in your community and mm-hmm. to your, your household community. Yeah. So what you're sharing to me is, is such a, a, a bigger reason why self-care then becomes important. So if you're hearing mm-hmm. this, mm-hmm. what are the things that you're doing big and small? Big I and mean, small. Sunday nights are a mask night for me. I did a mask mm-hmm. in preparation for this today. Oh, lovely. Thank you. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's, a, I mean, I can wash my face and I, I find that's kind of like brushing your teeth. You have to do it. You should. Um, but the, the extra, right. the, the little bit of additional self-care is right. you know, doing a mask. And I know that's right. far extreme from choosing a yoga group and, mm-hmm. a, and a widow group, but, but it's, it's not. They're, no. they're all the same piece of a bigger puzzle. It is. And I think a women, women a lot of times, 
it's that whole concept that self-care doesn't mean I'm being selfish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where, I mean, yesterday we spoke before this call and you're like, and you shared with me, I didn't, oh, I, you know, it's Sunday morning. I didn't do the workout today. Sorry. Right? I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 yeah. share it. <laughs> no, it's true. I was like, and, I usually go to this workout and I didn't. <laughs> and I said to you, well, that's because you were tuning in and listening to what your body mm-hmm. needs. And so a lot of times that's what it's about. That is self-care. How are you feeling today? Tuning in, recognizing it. For mm-hmm. me, um, I do a lot of, before I get out of bed, every single morning, you know, you know, we have a two-year-old who doesn't always sleep well, so we're still in that time of life, but yeah. it's just taking those few breaths, saying a few pieces of gratitude. Uh, for me, one piece that I learned years ago from yoga school is I choose to step out every morning with my right foot first because I'm leading forward with my, my best foot forward every day. And it is, as important as mm-hmm. that is, one of the key pieces to me that you said was, I choose, mm-hmm. I choose. make a choice to mm-hmm. step out. Mm-hmm. You could have a horrible morning mm-hmm. and not slept all night, but when right. you step out of your house to make a conscious, you might have to actually say it to yourself that yep. I'm going to step out with everything I've got. Yep. Um, yep. And and that's there's days that's, that's easier than others. Oh, of course. I mean, yeah, we 100%. say it's like, of course, uh, I just want to. 100%. Wanna... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and I think it's also being, giving yourself grace that every day is not going to be perfect. Or every day, there's always going to be days and seasons of life that we're in that it's just hard. Yeah, you might be hearing this and thinking, uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. You, your, your ladies are sitting there and it, yep. it's easy for you because yep. X, Y, or Z, but today I had this happen. Mm-hmm. Um, my, for example, I'll give you an example of yep. a day where I stepped out and it was very much not, I did not feel a ton of gratitude. My uh, son is icing his knee, big cooler full of water, yep. and the dog goes underneath this shelf that it's on and I'm, and I'm just seeing it, waiting for it to happen. Of course, the dog is under it. He hops up and gallons of water right. go spilling everywhere. Yep, the wheels and fell you just off. Feel, yeah, you just feel like, <laughs> in that yep. moment, it not only feels like a horrible moment, but it just like forget the whole day because yeah. the yeah. whole day is yeah. ruined. Phone and I was yep. definitely crabby for the first part of the yep. morning. I had to check myself. Eventually, I worked myself out of it. But in reality, it's not always the, the picture perfect. Mm-hmm. I stepped out with mm-hmm. positivity. No, I stepped out with still thinking about the damp towels sitting yep. up in my <laughs> the 13 yep. or so yep. towels. And is it a big deal in the grand scheme nope. of life? No. It dried up fine. It's water. But it sure bugs in the moment. Yeah. yeah. And it, was, it took yeah. extra time. We were yeah. late for things. So, you know, I, I get it. And hopefully as you're listening that you, mm-hmm. you can see yourself in those moments too where you just have to take a step back. Yep. Take a breath. Take a breath. I imagine your yoga practices yes. certainly helped with yes. that. And take a breath. And there's times too that like my husband and I, like we, you gotta, ch- you have to have to people in life that check you where it's like, okay, you need yes. to walk away, go in the other room, take a few breaths, recenter. Yeah. And to give each other that support. I always talk about too that you need to, you need to really dig in deep and know who your people are. Who, Ooh. who are those people in your life that good, the bad and the ugly, who has your back? Yeah. Who, who, when you call is going to answer and who are you going to answer for? Mm -hmm. So I have during that time in my life where I was really deep in that journey Mm -hmm. after David's loss, um, the, the, the people that really were in my corner then are the same people that are in my corner now. And I have shared with each and every one of them, you know, in the moment, months after now, years later, how Mm -hmm. grateful I am for them that they stood by me and kept yeah. standing by me. And I have made a promise to them that when those seasons in your life come, I am going to stand by you and I am going to be there. Mm. And so it's really digging in deep too. Like that self-care. Self-care is also thinking about who are my people and how am I best loving on them and supporting them. I think it's important to just take a moment to think of that. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that can take, a, a, write it down. That yeah. can take a few moments yeah. of gratitude in the morning yeah. at, in, in, as part of prayer, as part mm-hmm. of meditation. But it, it doesn't take long. No. No. But I think you'd be surprised to know that you have your yep. people. One. You do. You, you, everyone has someone. Yep. Yep. And if you don't, I think it's important to, to reevaluate where you're at yep. in life and, yep. and seek that out for yep. yourself. Yep. And not only that they're... Yep. there for you but you're that there you are there yeah. for that well and because life is messy and life is really hard and like I said it can mm-hmm. take one moment mm-hmm. and everything can change your whole life can change and so yeah. who are those people well and you said this earlier that mm-hmm. especially now mm-hmm. in this season mm-hmm. of our year when mm-hmm. everything looks 
mm-hmm. so picture perfect. Yep. And it, it, people and their, their holiday cards that seem to have it all together. Yep. And it isn't, I wouldn't say it isn't always that way. It isn't ever perfect. No, no. A holiday card is just like Facebook. It's, right. it's like, it's the, it's the best picture of the year. Yeah. Like it is the picture of and the year. And I love seeing them. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I mean, I love, I want to see I know. You the wanna, cute, the you, messy. Yeah. I don't care, but I want to see how the kids have changed and they've yeah. grown and such. But it's, so. it's, so a lot of times I always say to you, like another thing that I try to do practice in is when like that moment comes and a friend or somebody comes into your brain, just take a minute and send them a message or mm, say, that. I'm thinking of you today. Yes. Um, set a date on your calendar and stick with it to, to meet a friend for lunch. Um, one of my best girlfriends, she and I, being that the Twin Cities is just getting larger and larger, we yeah. happen to live a full hour away from each other. As suburbs, yep. even though you're suburbs yep. of the Twin Cities. Yeah. And <laughs> we, you know, made things happen so we could have lunch together. And I know I'm yesterday, and I know I'm not going to see her for several months, right. but I, you got to put in the time. Yeah. It's, it's a choice. It's a choice. Versus the other thing. Yep. Something you said about gratitude, too, I want to yep. touch on. Um, I forget the research, but it, it doesn't matter. The point is that in giving gratitude, even if it means for 10 seconds and, and one deep breath mm-hmm. in the morning, so four whole seconds, mm-hmm. that in giving gratitude to something or someone each day, it's not that it's the, the small moments each day. It's the compounding effect right. of overall that. gratitude mm-hmm. and how that gives you then new perspective mm-hmm. on your entire life yep. and can change the trajectory of your entire life Absolutely. because of that compounding effect of gratitude mm-hmm. and perspective. Yep. So. Yep. And we're making the world a better place. Yeah. Just share the love. Yeah. Just show people that they're seen, that they're valued, that they're not alone in a scary world. Just, just shine Perfect. the light. Now, I mean, you know, we talk about yep. what we can give ourselves for mm-hmm. self-care, but what happens when, you know, I think about my my mom, mm-hmm. and mom, if you're watching, yep. just because I care, because I love you, yep. that at 67, yep. you know, and not only, I shouldn't say not even yep. 67, but I start thinking about what I can do for mm-hmm. her, mm-hmm. far more so than she can do mm-hmm. for herself anymore, mm-hmm. and self-care takes on a whole new meaning. It does. So that really kind of was the next piece of the puzzle for Aaron and I. So... On that first date, if we go back to that moment, I remember my husband talking about wanting to own his own business one that day. That first date. That very first date. Yeah. Yeah. And he had, a, he had a great job. He was moving up into corporate America. He, he, he still loved that place the day he left it, but mm-hmm. he was looking for something deeper, that entrepreneurial spirit is within him and on fire. So it was a, it was a oh gosh, almost a two and a half year journey of us finding ultimately what that business was going to be for us. Okay. So long story short, we do have a business that's called uh, Touching Hearts at Home, where we are blessed to serve our elderly friends or um, adults living with disabilities in their homes or the communities they live in. Mm-hmm. And in turn, we're helping serve families. So um, when we were looking at businesses, one of the biggest factors for us is it had to be something to do with serving others. Okay. So when David first, um, when David was towards the end of his life, um, we chose as a family for him to have hospice at home. Okay. And we did not know what that was going to look like. None of us in that room had really gone through that myself, David's siblings, my parents, my brother. And uh, we, I don't I always tell the story. I don't know who in our family suggested a home care agency who okay. made that call. I still to this day don't know the name of the agency or the name of the woman who came in at night mm-hmm. to give me support. But I will always, always remember her face yeah. and how she made that time in my life a little bit easier. Yeah. So fast forward all these years later, every step of the journey I've taken, everything has led up to the point where here I meet Aaron and we start looking at businesses. And one of the businesses that came across our radar was a home care agency. Mm-hmm. Um that was successfully run by another husband and wife team that was looking to retire. <laughs> so here we are, and um, two years later in our business, we're able to serve individuals and families and to hold that space. So when we're working with our prospective clients and our, uh, the, our clients that we are working with and their families and even our caregivers, we have this amazing staff of caregivers that are, I honestly are living the, the, wh- what they were set on this earth to mm-hmm. do. I mean, the work mm-hmm. that they do is just unbelievable. 
And I talk a lot about everybody that I interact with, whether it's one of our caregivers, whether it's a daughter or a son that's talking with us about care for mom and dad, or a mother herself who's choosing care for their adult child that Mm -hmm. needs extra support. What are you doing for you? What are you doing to best support yourself? Right. And so we, we, that, that whole piece that's inside of me is, is sharing with friends, sharing with family, how are we best serving ourselves is now going out into the world that I serve through our business, which is amazing. Well, and something you may, you won't elaborate on because you're just sweet and humble this way, that when, it, when we met for lunch mm-hmm. after our first meeting, you talked so highly about your staff and yes. how one of your top priorities, if not yep. your top priority, is to see them happy yep. in what they're doing, Absolutely. successful, and mm-hmm. that they have all the tools that they mm-hmm. need. Because mm-hmm. just like self-care for the, let's say, parent of an yep. adult child yep. that has needs, but your staff oh, needs absolutely. to be able to go home to their families yep. and serve them. And give and them their, their best health. self. Yeah. Yes. yeah. And that, that, is, that is unique, hmm. I would say, in the, the job force. That yep. even, if you can think about the jobs you've had, it w- was your employer mm-hmm. concerned really truly about your health, health and your and well-being, that your happiness, yep. that you yep. could go home and truly serve mm-hmm. your family with mm-hmm. a, a, some energy left over. Yep. Yep. Um, that's that's important. It's really important because we believe that in order to best serve our clients and their families, our caregivers need to feel strong and healthy and mm-hmm. supported by by us. Mm-hmm. And that in turn is going to allow our employees, our caregivers, our team to go out and give the best care possible. Well, what are some, you know, I think, oh, I think about, I use my mom yep. as an example again. I think about the challenges. Yes. I mean, my mom is, she has been my caregiver. Yep. So yep. the challenge as, an, as now as an adult, mm-hmm. thinking about care for my adult parent, yes. it, it's, it's a whole It's a whole shift. world. It's a huge yeah. world. And there's lots of information out there. And It's a huge choice. And a lot of families come to us. Um, Another shout out is all the amazing people in my senior industry out there because people are, we have such a strong industry of care here in the Twin Cities where we are, we are living in a very excellent place to be. And so amazing partners out there in my senior industry world. Thank you. Um, And a lot of times people come to us in crisis. Let's say somebody has fallen or which we're visiting, never planned. Never planned. Yeah, it's, it's, we're I'm, visiting someone over the holidays. We're seeing mom and dad over the holidays, and mom and dad or grandma and grandpa is not looking so great, and uh-huh. things are starting to change. And so there's a lot of that. Those questions start bubbling. Well, where do we go from there? What's what do we do? How can mm-hmm. we help? And nearly half of Americans are living in this word we call the sandwich generation. Okay. So nearly half of Americans are helping an elderly parent while still having kids at home. So, and that is a lot of pressure. Okay. Yeah. Financially. Financial pressure. I, the three I, big ones are, okay. of course, financial pressure. Right. And having conversations with moms and dads and family, just what your wishes are, what does the financial landscape look like, what, so what do I want, isn't one. What, if there isn't one, and okay. then if there isn't one, seeking out a group like us or others that can help be a resource to help navigate that and find what we can do to help. Mm-hmm. Um. So financial is a big one. Okay. And then, of course, it's emotional because this is your the people you love. These are your people, right? And you feel like you, you have to take mm-hmm. care of them. Like, I should, mm-hmm. be, I should be doing this. Yes. My mom took care of me yes. most of her life, and, and yes. I should be doing this. And, and yet it's, it's embarrassing for her. She doesn't want me to. She doesn't right. want to burden me. Yep. And the, the emotional side around all yep. of that, right? Oh, so many things to navigate. We have a okay. lot of examples where exactly what you just said – where someone says, no, this is my job. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is my responsibility. And I 100% get that. And we have worked with sons and daughters that are killing themselves. I mean, they're working working full time. They're still in their careers. They have kids at home. They are in a marriage themselves, and they're not nurturing their relationship. They're taking care of mom and dad. And so then they find themselves at, let's say, mom and dad's apartment. And, okay, there's a stack of dishes, and... The sheets need to be cleaned, and I need to do this, mm-hmm. and we need to run the vacuum. And oh my gosh, look at the, the refrigerator. We need to restock this. We got to go grocery shopping. And all of a sudden, you're that's taking up hours Another of job. your Saturday, right. right? And then what happens? You're in and out, and mom and dad feel like, well, but you didn't have time to sit with me. Right. Like, we didn't have time to be together. You were here, and I appreciate the work you did, but it wasn't that quality time. Right. So, one thing we talk a lot about, and that comes back to self care, right? Exactly. How are you 
finding resources out there that are in the world, and there's many of them, to help bring that quality time back. So come you're, in and do yes. the dishes, go yes. grocery shopping for yes. mom. So when I show up, we can sit down and mm-hmm. do a puzzle. Yep. We can sit and Look laugh. Look for a photo and album. Yeah. Or you can help mom write out her Christmas cards this time of year right. and help getting those in the mail. Maybe to go have someone come in to help with all the, the things around the home so the two of you can go to lunch. That like, means more to yes. them than, I mean, as much as they appreciate having yep. their dishes done, yep. it me, they, they probably feel bad. My mom mm-hmm. would feel bad. She wouldn't want me to do that. Yep. yep. But yet it needs to get right. done. Right. And that's where Touching Hearts at yep. Home comes in. That's where we can help. We okay. can help people in their home or the senior communities they live in several hours a week. And then we have a lot of clients that we're serving 24 hours a day. Mm-hmm. And we can see people through when they just need a little bit of help all the way through end of life care. So it really can be. And I imagine it does vary. I mean, mm-hmm. there's no one oh. situation mm-hmm. because of the family yep. they have, that where their family lives, what yep. kind of uh, health where, where yep. their health is and yep. the financial side of right. it. I mean, there's so many right. variables. Right. Wow. And we can still be a resource too. We have an excellent division of what we do that's called senior placement where we can really, if being at home is no longer the right choice or the safe choice, mm-hmm. how do we navigate all the different living options that are out there? Whether it's a large, beautiful, brand new, open senior community, mm-hmm. or maybe it's a smaller one, or maybe it's even a residential home that's serving eight people in a community. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of ways that we can kind of help serve be a resource. Well, I know, for one, I'm grateful to know you mm-hmm. now in my life mm-hmm. at 42 and having yep. a mother that's 67 yep. to say, okay, mm-hmm. I'm glad I'm, I mean, yep. I don't know if I, if I really thought about this. Yes. You know, having I, a plan. I, so I'm, I'm saving for my mm-hmm. child's uh, college. Yep. I'm saving for my own retirement. What's the plan for mom and dad? Yep. What's it? And, and as, you know, and, and for many of you listening, it's like, it, it doesn't matter when, because Mm-mm. it can happen at 29, yep. Yep. where you need to have yep. a plan for yourself and your life, but mm-hmm. as you get older and your your, your loved ones around you yes. need additional care, mm-hmm. suddenly you're made aware of it, yep. and, and if you can plan ahead, yep. it's less stressful, of course, right. Right. but um, to switch gears, you talked yes. about emotional, mm-hmm. financial, mm-hmm. what was the other one? Um, emotional, financial, and just time it all uh, it's it's, mm-hmm. it's time and we all know there's not enough time in the, in the day yeah and I have had conversations with multiple sons and daughters that I'm on the phone with them and they're just calling to learn more about us and I just stop right there as they're rattling off okay mom is 87 years old and she fell and she's in the in the rehab center and they say she needs to get home and we need to get home care in place da, da, da. and I say and I say okay you're going through a lot right now mm-hmm. like how are you doing this is a lot. And so that goes back to just being there for someone else on the phone who I may never meet and just right. holding that space and being present and letting them know like, okay, let's just take this one step at a time. Just saying that mm-hmm. you're acknowledging yep. and recognizing for them that yep. you need to take care of yourself if you're going to make these phone yes. calls or do anything yes. for mom. Yes. And unless you're in that industry, mm-hmm. yoga, unless mm-hmm. you've experienced something, I don't think most people don't even think about that. Right. They just go, 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 go. Ten, yep. you know, a yep. thousand miles an hour, and they're just gonna hammer mm-hmm. until they get sick mm-hmm. or until they just have yep. an absolute breakdown. And you, yep. you, you can only. Everyone has a different amount of energy, time, resources, right. but at some point, there is a breaking point for there everyone. Is. Absolutely. And just your your nature in this mm-hmm. definitely this business was was so meant. I feel for that you way too. And, and yep. Aaron, because yep. it's it's who you are. Mm-hmm. Um. So I feel pretty grateful for that and knowing you again. You. But um. What else? You know. What What are the surprises would mm-hmm. we would we have in, in thinking about self-care for our loved ones mm-hmm. or what are some of the things that, that you wouldn't even expect going well, into it well I think one thing that I like to point out to people is like we can you could you should just make it simple uh it's going back to what are the things in life that that loved one always loved the most mm-hmm. so for example uh if if someone loved big band music it's about how can we bring that back in the home. If they had a strong military service, are there veterans programs and, and memorial mm-hmm. services that we can get them back to so they can be in that community? So it's also, you know, maybe they were really, really involved in their church, mm-hmm. but driving driving in wintertime feels scary to them. Mm-hmm. How can we look on the calendar and get them to those 
activities in their church to make them be more involved with their community. Mm -hmm. So it's thinking outside the box. I like to, we like to be, our team likes to be really, really creative where we are here to help people with the ADLs, the activities of daily living, of course, bathing, showering, getting food in the kitchen, all those things, meal mm -hmm. prep. Mm -hmm. But what are all the other things that bring back what that joy. person loves the most? Bring the joy Pure back. Joy. Yeah. Well, it comes full circle. It comes full circle around where you were in the need for number one, mm -hmm. community. Yep. Community yes. and self-care. It yep. comes full circle. And here, the caregiver, mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. touching hearts of yep. own staff, recognizing that the one thing this right. person needs is someone to talk to, yep. a community, a, mm -hmm. a companion in that yep. way. And yep. it, it's no different at any time and place in your yep. life that we as people, regardless of technology and social media and how things are expanding in the way that they are, we all, will always need each other. That human interaction, yeah. uh, there can be a lot of isolation, a lot of loneliness. Then it goes back to there is a lot of depression mm -hmm. in that population. So how are we bringing that joy back? Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, I'm. I just. It's. I'm. I'm inspired, but I'm. In, I feel like I'm inspired to act. Where mm. this time of year again, yes. as you're getting together with family and, mm -hmm. and even friends, to yeah. have some of those tough conversations. Yeah. Um, in my experience, it, it, it's kind of funny that it's less of a tough conversation in my home because my mom had a difficult time when her parents became ill mm -hmm. and passed. Mm -hmm. And because of her experience, mm -hmm. she doesn't want that for us. Yep. So every year it's this annual thing that we we meet in the office and she mm -hmm. goes through, you know, where of all, all her, her papers are and yep. <laughs> the, yep. the things that she wants to make sure we know exactly what she needs. Right. Now, I think that the, I'm, I'm blessed in that Fairly that is a, unique. Yes. She's not embarrassed to mm -hmm. share the details of mm -hmm. either financial or yep. structure or even health. Yep. She's very open about yep. that, but I don't think that's the case for many. You know, it, it, we do see it sometimes, but a lot of times we, when people are coming into us, again, it's that crisis moment mm -hmm. where they don't know where things are located. Mom and dad didn't really talk to us about that. I think it's a part of sometimes Midwestern values. Like, yeah. okay, money, we don't talk about money. You don't want to um, burden them with the, with the details of right. you know, your children. But mm -hmm. even conversations that that um, Aaron and I have had with our own parents have changed over the last several years because we're in this business. Mm -hmm. And so I think that uh, maybe not a, in, in front of the Christmas tree is not the moment right. to have the conversation, but really finding time to just share with people what your wishes are. It's And if mm -hmm. I take it a step back, um, I think that really comes into my heart and my life is that David really did share with me when he was going through that last time in his life, what his wishes were for me. Mm -hmm. And he did say that he wanted to, me to find love again. And he wanted me to continue on with my life and with Layla and what mm -hmm. we were going to set out to do in this life. He wanted me to live this big life. That's yeah. what his dream was for me. And even st stepping back, no matter how old you are, where you are in your journey with your relationship or your marriage, just having those conversations with your partner, like, what do you want for the other person yeah. in their life if you're no longer there? Yeah. Because it does happen. And that's a tough conversation to have. But it's one that I challenge people to just have conversations with, with the people that they love the most, with mom and dad, with mm -hmm. your spouse. Hey, because we all know two things. Yeah. We're going to live and we're going to pass away. And, right. and we get that choice of how we're going to make that count. And it is a choice every single day. And you know in that moment, mm -hmm. let's say as as a, as a spouses, yep. that you're sharing what your wishes are. Yep. If, if I've, I've told my husband that. I said, this is what I want for you. This is, yep. you know, if, if I were to die today, yep. this is what I would want for yep. you. Um, that often the other mm -hmm. doesn't want to hear it, mm -hmm. but they have heard it yep. in some way, whether yep. they acknowledge that or not. So that th should that day come, yep. at least they can confidently know right. what to do yep. without living with guilt right, right. or not knowing and then mm -hmm. feeling lonely themselves yep. because they're not living a life that they maybe they want or they know their spouse wanted mm -hmm. so that's a, a great tip it's for great a, every it's age for every age and just to keep talking with one another yeah yeah any other self-care tips yes so just, I was thinking about this before today so yeah. one of my biggest things that I just do in my daily life and like I said everybody gets into this differently for me um I'm really committed to moving my body every day. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. last night we had a, yesterday we had a really full day. And so last night I was out walking the dog at eight o'clock at night 
and I got my headphones 20 degrees. in. <laughs> I'm bundled up. And I said to Aaron, I didn't put snow pants on and that will come. But I came mm-hmm. home and I said, we came home because like I started not being able to feel my legs. Mm, like yeah. that's usually a good moment to turn it around. <laughs> um, but doing that, um, you know, we have a treadmill in our basement. And of course, treadmills are a financial piece. We got ours on Black Friday, so look for the good deals. Get on the garage sale sites, find yourself a treadmill, or I find myself at a lot of times here locally going to our community center. Mm -hmm. It's free to walk around the the track. Perfect. Just go move your body. So it's that piece. It's connecting with the people that you know them in your heart right now, those people that you're missing, and oh, Mm -hmm. I don't see this person Mm -hmm. enough, or I don't talk to this person enough. Get something on the calendar. Mm -hmm. Get something where that fuels your heart. Um, we touched on really looking and digging in deep. Who are the, your circle of people? Who are the people that you're you're surrounding yourself are, around? Are you surrounding yourself with people that cheer you on, lift you up, feel you forward, or those people that are just heavy and yeah. bring you down? That you feel obligated yes. to, yeah. and, and you know that you may have those people in your life because let's say that they're family and they yep. they, they yep. pull on you a little yep. and they they drain your energy. Yep. You love them but they're not the people that build you up. And that's okay. I think that's that's yep. just reality. Yep. That you choose to keep them. Yes. But you you don't need to be mm-hmm. near them all the time mm-hmm. and, and and have it draining you additionally. Right. They can be sort of on the right. the, the outside and well, pull and in s- the people that build you up. And speaking to that, I think that coming back to choice is that there are things in life where we're going to be in suffering. Mhm. And when, of course, for me personally, when I was going through the loss of the, the diagnosis of my husband and then ultimately the loss, I was in the suffering. I was deep in that suffering. Mm-hmm. But there are some people in all of our lives that it's easier to sometimes sit in the suffering than to choose to step out of it. Yeah. And, and so choice. there are going to be people in your life, in the season of their life, that they're, they're kind of in that suffering spot. And right. so what do you do? You love on them. You hold the space for them, but you have to remind yourself sometimes that what they are going through is happening to them. That doesn't mean it's also happening to you. Oh, and you don't have to take it on right? and let it pull on you. There's a way to support That's people huge. you love. Right. And there's times in life when, of course, the people that we love the most, it, it, it's hard. It's, you feel their yeah, heart. Yeah. Well, you think you're yes. helping. It's not helping if you're both suffering. Yeah. Um, and I've learned it even through my son's knee injury. Mm-hmm. As, as small as, as it is, it, it weighs on me. Yeah. I take it Through on mama. physically. Yeah. I'm like, why do I physically feel ill? Mm-hmm. But I don't need to. And, and that, that recently even, that's come down to a choice where it's not making it any lesser for him if yep. I'm hurting too. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, I call it sympathy pain. Where I'm like, why does my right knee hurt? It's weird. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's a bit of sympathy mm-hmm. pain. Where it is, 100%. And, and taking the, the load off myself, mm-hmm. I've found over the last few weeks, it's made me more energized and mm-hmm. a, even more available to him because I'm not, now we're not both sitting in the suffering. So yep. I think that's perfect advice yep. and great tips to yep. say, even big or small, yep. that self-care is not selfish. Nope. And mm-hmm. that self-care doesn't have to mean a ton of time. Nope. But I do think that self-care needs to be something that's non-negotiable, yes. that you're yes. going to take a moment, mm-hmm. even, okay, small kids at home. He's yep. got a two-year-old yep. where, you know, I, I remember those days where I couldn't go to the bathroom by myself. Mm-hmm. It, it was when my husband got home, like, I'm going to go to the bathroom yep. and I'm just going to put a mask on my face and I'm going to yep. sit in there for about a half an hour. So yep. can we, can I do that? It might end up being 20 minutes, yep. but it would have been zero had I not right. teed it up mm-hmm. to have something. So mm-hmm. I encourage any little bit oh, absolutely. to get that. And, and also ask for help. Yes. Because, you. you know, I, you know, for that time period where I was a single mom and all those single parents out there who are trugging it along, God bless you. Yeah. And, but then also that's why you build up a community. You figure out ways that you can get help and support. And it doesn't have to be financial. Like, let's say, uh, and I did this for years with another mom where I took her kids one day a week and she took Layla for mm-hmm. one day a week. So we, you could find that time to carve out time for each other, kind Perfect. of make some negotiations, figure it out. So as you're building up that community, it is vital that you find time every single di- day that is just for you. I love it. Yeah. Well, and where can people find you mm-hmm. and your business? So I'm all over social media. Uh, Brianne Stromley. I am the only Brianne Stromley on the internet. So makes I'm very easy. easy to find. Yes. Not, hey, yes. makes it easy. And spell yes. your, your name, though. Uh, B R E A N N E S T R O M L E Y. That's my same piece on both LinkedIn 
and uh, Facebook and Instagram, please connect with me. Um, give me a shout out what you thought today. I love it. And then of course our website, you can always, we're, our phones are answered 24 hours a day as is our website. So our website is www.touchingheartsmn for Minnesota mm-hmm. dot com. And mm-hmm. you know, I'm going to be reposting this myself and okay. yeah. Well, right. hopefully we'll see touching hearts MN expand out to touching hearts all over the country, <laughs> yeah. all over the world. Yeah. God, she's very energetic. She's, we're going to expand. We're going to yeah. grow this thing. We, yeah. Well, thank you for being thank here. You. Thank, thank you. you. I so appreciate much. it. Oh, us. so now if you're tuning in. Please reach out to Brianne. Reach out to me. If you have questions, stick them in on the comments. Send us an email, and we would love to hear from you. Thank you for your time. Bye, everybody. Uh,